Welcome everybody to the Stephen Bobby Show. Bobby is back with us today. I'm Welcome back. back. I'm back. <laughs> I missed you last week. I had, a, I had a good vacation. I had a good vacation. You know, it was our anniversary. <laughs> anniversary. 31st anniversary. Uh, 31st. Where 21st anniversary. Where you go? Uh, Cabo. Cabo San Lucas. What? And I tell you over there, I saw a shirt. I had. A, I saw a shirt that said, uh, uh, don't worry, you're on the, uh, the, the fun side of Trump's wall. <laughs> I laughed so hard. You know, they, they play jokes on it and stuff, but it right, was, it was right. good. It it's was great, good. great. Awesome. Yeah. So you had a nice little relaxing time. So oh, great time. since you've been gone, oh. we've had um, a, 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 we've had a fun time here in the States yeah. and there's all kind of stuff going on. Yeah. Let's talk about the Virginia issue. Yeah. Governor uh, Ralph Nordstrom is in trouble right now. Yep. And it seems as though Lieutenant Governor is in a little bit of heat and so is the Attorney General and a few other politicians Man, in the they're state. going after everybody over there, aren't they? <laughs> They so want, they want their own witch hunt. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but, well, we have to, I guess, explain who they are. But right, right, we'll right. get to that point. But. So I think I think uh, uh, so. Governor Ralph Nelstrom is a practicing pediatric doctor, right? Got himself in a little heat. Uh, um, more about the fact of, I guess, it's a racial issue in some pictures that have surfaced yeah. in his college, right? Yep. In his college time. And uh, we'll show you these pictures, and we'll, and we'll get more in depth as to to the meaning of this. But what do you think? Do you think uh, uh, Governor Ralph Nordstrom is a racist? Do I think he's a racist? Mm -hmm. Do I think he's let's, a let's let's go you know let's what? go right now? I'm going in the trenches. I'm no, going in the trenches. Know let's. I know everyone wants to know where do we stand? Are, is he a racist? I mean, are the blackface pictures racist? You know what? Back then and there, from everything that I know. Um, I will say at that time, he might have been an ignorant racist. Right. Okay. But where we stand today, I think we need to go over a timeline of how these things came yeah. forward. I kind of, you know, it's, yeah. uh, let's release to them um, exactly how things played out and okay. whether or not, I mean, is this about racism? Is this about, I mean, is this a smear campaign? Right. What is being set up here? Right. Because, come on, <laughs> from the conservative side to yeah. come out and, say and call that. out racism? <laughs> Donald Trump calling. Something is going on, uh, man. Mexicans are rapists. Something is going uh, on. Uh, no more Muslims. Right. All, of sudden, then, all of a sudden, they care. Yeah, they care all about racism. They care. Yeah. So, so I think, I, and, and I think it's a lot more deeper in this. And there's a lot of situations that's going on in the state of Virginia. Okay, Virginia is I consider it a purple state. So okay. it has some. It's it's slowly turning blue. And there's some issues in the state that Republicans understand that they are losing the state somewhat. Okay, so the state legislator at the state level is controlled by Republicans. Okay, but there are Democrats in the state, of course, that are that are um, in there. And one of those representative is Representative State Legis State Congresswoman uh, Kathy Tran, who yes. was who presented a bill actually on Monday, January twenty eighth, two thousand nineteen. She presented a bill. I think it's called twenty HB twenty four ninety one. Right. So the bill basically is, um, you know, and you kind of explained this bill pretty good. And I, I kind of want to put this before we get into the timeline, because I think it's important even before we get into this, because it's not explained very well. Explain to us what about the HB 21 in the state. Do, do you know? The, the, the House bill there that, that she's putting forward is just getting rid of a lot of the red tape mm -hmm. that there is in, in a sense of what we can look at as emergency uh, late-term abortions. Okay. Okay. So right now in the state of Virginia, you have to, if, if a woman is dying, let's say, and you have to choose between the mother and the child, mm. um, or you know that kind of decision, um, or if something's going to come down the pipeline, mm. you actually have to uh, have the doctor obviously recommend it. Mm -hmm. You have to have another doctor come in and recommend it, and mm -hmm. then you have to go through, I, th I believe, like a psychiatrist or mental health counselor to come in to make sure that that stuff is happening. So, Three different doctors. Yeah, and so. Understandably, okay, mm -hmm. in a regular process of things, if a, if a woman is sitting there at six months or we'll say seven months pregnant mm -hmm. and says, you know, I, I need to have an abortion, then you know what? If she's going to lie and say, you know, it's a danger to me, I, I, you know what? Uh, she should probably see a psycho psychiatrist, psychiatrist, psychologist right. just to make sure that's the right thing to do and that if she really is suffering. Okay. Um, you know, th those things happen. But there are times when you don't have time for that. Yeah. There are times and situations where maybe the baby's not viable right now, or right. maybe, or it's not, you know, it, it, and the mother's uh, life is in danger. Right. You know, there's preeclampsia, there's all kinds of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. And if she, her life is in danger and <clears throat> the baby is not viable, um, things have to happen and they have to happen now, or else, you know, there's a high percentage that they'll die. A lot of times a doctor will 
make that decision and maybe do something, but then the doctor can get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, the doctor may be able to be penalized and go to, go to prison for making that judgment, for not following the rules that Virginia had already set up. So she's trying to streamline that yes, process right, through this bill. Right, and no okay. matter what, okay. she cannot, the state governments cannot override the federal law, right? which federal law already states anything after a viable time, right. which is generally either 21 or 24 weeks. And the federal law we're talking about is Roe versus Wade. Roe versus, well, the decision that came through Roe, through Roe, Roe versus, versus Wade and how we okay. practice. All right. So what you're looking at is after that 24 weeks, the states get to decide what to do mm -hmm. to allow a woman to choose to have an abortion or not. Mm -hmm. But if she's to have an abortion, a late-term abortion, it really has to be because of a danger to her physical or mental, mental health. Yeah, health. Okay. It has to be. If, right. if, if it can't be, let's get rid of that myth. Yeah. And we'll talk about it later. All right. It's not. Yeah. I want an abortion. Do it. No. Yeah. It's not, oh, you broke up with me. Do it. Yeah. It's not those stereotypical things conservatives throw in front of us. It's right. not. But we'll get, we'll get and, into that. And, and, so, and so here's, and, and, and so everybody's like, well, what the heck are they talking about abortion when you're talking about Nor Ralph Nordstrom's um, issue with, with racism? Because they're connected. And I'm going to bring you the timeline of why these things are connected. Okay, so on Monday, January 28th, uh, Representative Congresswoman Kathy Tran put a bill out um, talking about um, what Bobby just told you and explained to you, right? So I'm going to put the video up so you can understand. She was at uh, represent. She was with the House Majority Leader, which is a Republican, uh, Todd Gilbert, and. Todd Gilbert, Representative Todd Gilbert and Kathy Tran had a, uh, a conversation on the House floor in Virginia. How late in the third trimester could a, a physician perform an abortion if he indicated it would impair the mental health of the, of the woman? Or physical health. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm um, talking about the mental health. So, I mean, through the third trimester. The third trimester goes all the way up to 40 weeks. Okay. But to the end of the third trimester. Yep. I don't think we have a limit in the bill. So, um, where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth, would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that would be a you know, a decision that the doctor, the physician, and the woman I understand would make that. At that. I'm point. asking if your bill allows that. My bill would allow that, yes. Okay, so now you see the firestorm. Right. Okay. And you can see how there's going to be confusion from the way you explain the HB uh, 2491 bill is and the way that was you know, she was pretty much cornered, right? Be simply because of the... <laughs> no, she is, but the, the, question, the thing is is that it's not her bill yeah. that actually... It's the current law in right. Virginia. Right. It's the current law. She's not changing anything. Yeah. A mother can still choose. Yeah. So, if so, certified by the physicians that the law requires for. Right. In this bill, that's what's already there. All she is doing is limiting the amount you know, just shrinking the amount of people who must get involved. Right. So it's not so much, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. does the current bill do it? It's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and it's I, not I, how they're painting it. Yeah. And, and if she had the time to really, you know, uh, to elaborate on it, yeah. that would have been and, and better. I, and, and, let's, and, and let's be fair, this is a Republican majority leader in the House here at the local House in Virginia. Correct. So, of course, she's going to try. Now, of course, that's what the public went with. Oh, my gosh. Here are these Democrats, and, and it was all over. It, it, she, understanding that, there was a firestorm well, on this. Look, anytime you're in front of a jury or in yeah. front, you know, for, for, under penalty of perjury, yeah. you know, the less you say, the, the better. better off you are. And, and, and that's how it works. Right. She's an attorney. That's, you know, you, that's what you do. That. Mm -hmm. You say yes, you say no, and, and it, it's directly to the, quest, to the question that was asked. Right. But the public only hears at the end there, yeah. can a woman choose to have an abortion at 40 weeks? Would your bill allow her to? And that's, yes. what, and that's what happened. That's what we hear yeah. when you present it that way. Yeah. And if she could think outside of the thing, she could have said outside of the box of being in front of them uh, under oath, she could have uh, answered better as if she was, you know, like say on a news station. 
Mm -hmm. You know, if, if she was asked that question and could clarify and, and speak about it. But when you're in front of them, you want to stay, say as little as possible and answer to the truth. So, yeah, yeah, her bill, the bill that the law that's there, all of that allows the opportunity if a woman is woman's health is in danger. Mm -hmm. Right. To have an abortion. And I think she has a right to choose at that moment because her life is in danger. Right. And, and that's not being said. No. So it was, you know, and, that, and I think that's the issue. And then that was Monday, January mm -hmm. 28th. Of course, it's going to be all over the news. It's, it was everywhere. I remember this. And I didn't pay too much attention to it because I don't really listen to that. You know, this is already, this is a Supreme Court issue. It's already been uh, uh, talked. There's, nobody's going to change any law that isn't already covered under Roe versus Wade when it comes to abortion, period. So with that firestorm, Tuesday comes around, January 29th, which is the next, very next day. She had another response. Go ahead and put that up, that response. This is her video response. Check it out. Hi, I'm Kathy Tran, and I represent the 42nd District in the Virginia House of Delegates. I know women in my family, women in my district, and women across Virginia who've had to make the very personal decision as to whether or not they're going to have an abortion. That's why I introduced a bill to repeal the medically unnecessary and unduly burdensome barriers that Virginian women face when they're accessing this health care service in consultation with their doctor. I presented my bill this week and I was really surprised by the line of questioning that I got. This bill had been introduced in the General Assembly in previous years and in fact this session was also introduced in our state senate. I want to be very clear about what's currently allowed in Virginia law. Right now women are able to access an abortion in the later stages of pregnancy under certain conditions with the approval of medical doctors. I've done nothing to change that. What I have done is try to make sure that women are able to make these decisions and access these services in a timely manner. Since the bill hearing, I've heard from many women in my district and across Virginia who support my efforts to make sure that politicians don't get between a woman and her health care decisions. I appreciate their support and I will continue to stand with the women in Virginia. Thank you. So there's your her, there's her explanation. So mm -hmm. she 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 had the first uh, when she was on the House floor in the Virginia House floor, and then her response to that once the firestorm hit national news. What do you think? No, I mean it, it, you know what what hit the national news really is going to be what she did in court. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone paid attention to. Right. That's what spread everywhere. And I wish she could have said what she said in that video. Yeah. It, you know, in in in, uh, in front of uh, um, uh, the the other folks when she mm -hmm. was being questioned, the problem with her answer is that she now she had the opportunity to explain what it really means to the what? forty week word. Yeah, that word and what you explained important. in the beginning. It's, it's very important yeah. that people hear. Yeah, you know that that they understand what she was trying to get away from, get people to understand is that she isn't changing anything to do with term limits. Yeah, I mean, the limits of of when an abortion can happen. It's already Virginia law. 40 weeks. Yeah. She didn't change any of that. She yeah. didn't propose any change to the current standard that mm -hmm. Virginia goes by. Right. And so the 40 week thing was not, it has nothing to do with her. Right. With her bill or anything. Right. And that's what needed to come out. I was, you know, we were hoping that that would have come out yeah. in her uh, uh, answer back to, you know, clarification yeah. back to the rest of the country. She certainly did not clarify it enough. Yeah. She just didn't. But she did. And she took a, you know, she took the time to do this, which also gave the opportunity for whoever is running this smear campaign about the abortion uh, efforts of, you know, changing bills in Virginia yep. to continue to come back right. and to make this thing louder mm -hmm. where they already have this woman saying in their mind, 40 week abortions hours before, oh, yeah. you know, it's completely the plastered on Main right. Street. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That they want to keep the attention there. Yeah. And so we'll talk about what happens in the timeline yep. that comes after that. So and, and the connection yep. we're going to talk about of Ralph Nordstrom and how these things are connected on the other side. All right. So we'll All right. see you. Welcome back, everybody. A, and so in the first segment, we talked about um, the firestorm of Representative Kathy Tran and the issues of abortion and things that were going on within the state prior to the Ralph Nordstrom issue. 
Uh, remember, Ralph Nordstrom wasn't even in the, it had nothing to do with the governor yet. Nothing. <laughs> nothing to do with the governor yet. Nothing. So that was Monday, Tuesday we gave you on the first half. Now let's talk about Wednesday. So Wednesday, Governor Ralph Nordstrom, got, uh, I think is a program called Ask the Governor. It's a WTOP, something he does once a month or twice a month, that he goes to a radio station and explains things that are happening in the state. Now, of course, there's a firestorm about this abortion issue. And what's the first thing you think WTOP asked? <laughs> they asked about this abortion. issue. Now, understand that Ralph Nordstrom, if you guys don't know this, is a pediatric doctor. Okay, he's a doctor. He, he, he was a, he's been a doctor for years, uh, worked on children. He know, he, he's very familiar with this situation about the abortion issue. Um, he, and he actually was very thorough when they asked him. And I didn't actually, you guys can go back and actually look this up. Um, the, it was kind of hard to find a video and it wasn't good. So I'm going to basically tell you what they asked him and what he said. So he, he ha actually, actually had an explanation of um, they asked him specifically what he thought State Representative Kathy Tran was trying to introduce. And this was, you know, what he said. He said, referring to a fetus that is not viable or has severe, de severe deformities, the infant would be delivered. The infant would be kept comfortable. The infant would be r resurrected if that's what the mother and the family desire. And then a discussion would ensure, ensure between the physician and the mother. That's what he said. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay, so if, if there was something that was going to go on with the mother, the mother was going to die or something, the baby would be kept comfortable, and then, you know, the decision would be made between the doctor and the mother. That's all he said. Right. And, 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 and <laughs> at this particular point, when, yeah. the, when, 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 when the baby has been separated, the fetus has been separated from the womb, right? It's, right. It's, it is no longer an issue about terminating a pregnancy. Right. She's no longer pregnant. Right. It's done. Yeah. The law of abortion, the law of right to choose. Yeah. That is all done with. Yeah. Because baby is born. Mm -hmm. Right. Whether living on a machine, whether breathing well, whatever the situation is. Irrelevant. Abortion is gone. The, yeah. the, the, the conversation of abortion is irrelevant. What he has gone to now is into laws that are about a living being yeah. that is there, you know, the same laws that cover you and me. Yeah. You know, when they want to talk about murder and everything, at that point, there's no aborting. There's no more right to choose on that piece. Yeah. Now it's just the regular thing. Yeah. Now it is the same laws uh, that apply to you, to me, apply here as yeah. well. Okay. And um, that has nothing to do with it. Those are two mm. different subjects. And that's where he would be experienced as a pediatrician. Because that's when he would come into the and come and come to play, and he knows the play yeah. at the hospital mm -hmm. is when that baby is born. But the laws of Roe v. Wade, whatever we do, whatever this country wants to do with abortion, has nothing to do with the laws now that apply to this baby that has been born. Yeah, needs to be resuscitated. Whatever yeah. the situation is, mm -hmm. two different subjects. And, and but and and he, you know, I think Governor Nordstrom, unlike what Representative Kathy Tran did, was he kind of got into detail, kind of like a situation, a hypothetical, right? And they ran away with this, of course. Republicans lost their minds on that answer. All the governor of Virginia supports uh, forty-week abortions because that's basically what that's. That's what was, uh, that's... But even in his example, he didn't even talk about abortion. You know, in, in this yeah. example, it's a question whether the baby cannot make it or, or, or could make it. Yeah. And the baby was, it was chosen that the baby yeah. was to be born and resuscitated. Right. That is what conservatives want. And how yeah. can they spin that answer yeah. to something that is pro, you know, right. in their way, you know, pro-choice, that's damaging to an abortion, nonchalantly kill... You because know. we know they don't care. It's not about that. Right. It's not about that. And it's being spun that way. It's, it's, it's funny is, is that for a, a political party that wants limited government, wants, wants government out of, the, you know, get out of my bedroom, get out, all this stuff, right? That's Republicans' mandate. Mm -hmm. Why are they trying to control... I just don't understand that issue with them. I just, it does, doesn't make any sense to me. So what do they do next? Fire, there was, well, what do you mean? No, so the next so, step in what we're talking about, what is the smear campaign, it's about abortion at this yeah. point, but. Okay, so, so to, yeah, right. so it's kind of turns, right? So that's, I mean, that's a good point. So Ralph Nordstrom, he got all kind of heat. Okay, so he put, he actually put up a tweet, put up a tweet on there, Ralph Nordstrom's tweet for the, 
uh, his, his first tweet. So his first tweet, he said, I have devoted my life to caring for children and any insinu insinuation otherwise is shameful and disgusting. That was his tweet because he was getting a lot of firestorm for this because now it's everywhere. It's it, it, even Donald Trump weighed in on this the very next day, which was Thursday, January 31st. So now we've talked about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Thursday, January 31st, Donald Trump came in and this is what he said. Democrats are becoming the party of late term abortions, high taxes, open border and crime. So first of all, we know for a fact that Donald Trump don't, well, we don't know for a fact. I just know that Donald Trump don't care about abortion. It's not an issue to him, never has been, never been a big deal to him, never mentioned it prior to running for, for, for uh, president. It never was a big deal. But what we noticed- Probably force it on people. <laughs> right. But what we've noticed is a transformation that they, because no one knows who Representative Kathy Tran is, but people know who Governor Ralph Nordstrom is. And this went, it was every, Tommy Lauren was talking about it, uh, Marco Rubio was talking about it, Ted Cruz was talking, it was everywhere, right? It was all over the, and I still, because I just didn't find it, because I know how Republicans play this abortion thing, I still didn't even look at it, because I didn't think it was important. Right, and, and I'll tell you though, if he would have said uh, something against the abortion, say no, late term abortions shouldn't be yeah. something that we condone. Right. If he said that, it would have made such national news. National that, news. That, you know, the, the congresswoman and the governor going at it, no, they, they, they wouldn't have done it. Right. So now that he said it, now they, they, they got the backing on this piece. Yeah. And then, what so now, now this that was Thursday. Mm -hmm. The tweet went out, tweets went out. On Friday, we noticed that there was, especially Friday morning, there was this storm of things on Ralph Nordstrom now, you know, and, and all this stuff with Ralph Nordstrom and a Republican website, a big Republican attack machine. I'm not even say their name started circulating a photo of Ralph Nordstrom. Let's put the photo up uh, of Ralph Nordstrom during this his call. That's going all, all over. Place. It's it went viral. It went out in the morning. It was everywhere by Friday morning. People are still arguing about it today. Yes, mm -hmm. so we went from the abortion issue and Kathy Tran issue and HB 2421 issue into Governor Nordstrom trying to clarify as a, as a pediatrician doctor, PhD that understands it, to now they're attacking Ralph Nordstrom, the governor. And they're attacking his credibility, they're attacking everything about him, and that picture was released, and now he's being painted as a racist. Right, because he had this photo back in the 1970s when he was in school, or 1980s, whenever it was, and Ralph Nordstrom. Now it is everywhere. You had the Black Caucus within the state, um, uh, uh, all Democratic leaders. I, I don't even know anyone that says that it was okay to put that that tweet up. Right. So, and and me and you have had this conversation before of Democrats just cutting the legs out of other Democrats before realizing or before actually allowing it to be, allowing him to explain himself. And he actually had a video on this, and I think we should actually talk about this on the other segment, but. But this is where we, we can start to see, yeah. to start to tie in. What, what was going on. What is actually really going on, mm -hmm. because I want you to think before we go to the break, and as you take your break to, to get your drink or whatever it is that you need to do, I want you to think about when did conservatives actually feel like attacking Democrats on the issues of, of race discrimination? <laughs> I think that's when a good was point. That big deal, topic? right? I mean, right. When, when did they really care? Isn't there the one attacking somebody? You know, <laughs> everything's going to be politically correct. Everything, you know. Remember, that's all they always talk about. I guarantee you, they. We can probably find where they've actually defended people, right, with the, wearing a black face. Yeah. That's not racist. We have a sitting U.S. That's president. Okay. We have a sitting U.S. president that. And a Charlottesville incident where there were neo-Nazis said mm -hmm. that both sides, uh, there were good people on both sides. Right. Okay. We have a sitting U.S. president that said that. Now, in 2018, last year, because that was last, was Charlottesville 17 or 18, whenever it was, it, we're talking relatively, we're not talking about 1980 when Ralph Nordstrom's photo was up there and maybe at the time of where he was at. We don't know that situation. But we do know that in 2017, 2018, saying both sides of a neo-Nazi group is wrong. Right. Neo-Nazis ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. so take that back and listen to it. We'll catch you on the other side. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. So now we got a timeline, 
We got everything that's going on. And we stopped that Friday. And the situation of Friday with the, with the Republican attack machine on Governor Ralph Nordstrom. Now, Governor Ralph Nordstrom, we waited at uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. I, 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 now, I, now it caught my attention. So there was nothing. Uh, I was all over uh, progressive radio. I was all over uh, um, some, of the, some of the talk shows and stuff like that. Nothing on Ralph Nordstrom. Nothing. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, nothing. Around 6, 7 o'clock, our time, so what, 9, 10, or 11, and the East Coast time, Governor Nordstrom's time, he puts out a video. Right. Well, we're all waiting. Everyone's waiting to see if he's resigning or resigning. What's happening. Right. So everybody's now waiting. Yeah. What is going to happen? Yeah. Right? And, and there's talk even within the Democratic Party. This is bad. Yeah. This is bad. And I, he comes out with a video. And his, this is his first response video. Mm -hmm. So let's look at his first response video and then we'll talk about it. My fellow Virginians, earlier today, I released a statement apologizing for behavior in my past that falls far short of the standard you set for me when you elected me to be your governor. I believe you deserve to hear directly from me. That photo and the racist and offensive attitudes it represents does not reflect that person I am today or the way that I have conducted myself as a soldier, a doctor, and a public servant. I am deeply sorry. I cannot change the decisions I made, nor can I undo the harm my behavior caused then and today. But I accept responsibility for my past actions, and I am ready to do the hard work of regaining your trust. I have spent the past year as your governor fighting for a Virginia that works better for all people. I am committed to continuing that fight through the remainder of my term and living up to the expectations you set for me when you elected me to serve. Thank you. You saw the video? Right. Excellent. Yeah. Leave it at that. Right. Kind of. I mean, the only <laughs> thing that was missing is like, you look, I was racist back yeah. then, and I didn't know it. I was an <laughs> or I did racist things. Yeah. And I didn't know it, and I don't care it, and it's not me. So fine, that a minute went through. That's the first step. Yeah. First step. Yeah. Great job. Great Good. Job. I, I thought first it was excellent. Step. Excellent. First step. So that was Friday. First step. <laughs> excellent. We'll see you do the hard work. Yes. Yeah. And I'm very happy, Governor Nordstrom, that you did that. Mm -hmm. Governor Nordstrom had a reply. He didn't like the response he was getting. So what's the reply? Saturday, February 2nd, he had this video. This was not my picture. I was not in that costume, either uh, as black-faced or as KKK, uh, and it's, it's not me. Seriously, right? Really? I mean, when you're going so well, and, and, and it's not funny. <laughs> but the problem here at this particular time for me, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am very, very upset now. Like, Okay, great. I think, okay, you're not a racist. You changed. <laughs> you're a better man, and you're going to do the hard work. You're going to continue Bobby, to apologize. No, oh, seriously. You're going to continue to apologize every time this issue comes up and be understanding that that's the way it was before, yeah. and that's just the time. Yeah. And now, you know, I mean, I realize I was wrong, and <sighs> apologize day after day. Go through the rehabilitation of this and let everyone see that journey. But what do you do? He went full Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he went full Trump. That's what he did. When I looked at that video, Bobby, when I saw yeah. that video, yeah. I said, that's full Trump. Yeah. What he's doing is basically, okay, that was me. But you know what? Someone in his campaign, because I, you know, when I saw that first video, I was like, okay, excellent. Like you were saying, excellent. He should have just left it there. Yep. He allowed someone in his campaign. I don't know if it was a pub. I don't know who's in charge of that darn campaign. But whoever thought that it was okay to come back and say, even if it wasn't him, let's just say it wasn't him. Let's say that it wasn't him and he realized later, oh my God, that wasn't me. You know what? Just go with it. Because there's enough information out there that he did blackface with Michael Jackson. Um, there's even a picture circulating out there with... Um, if the picture wasn't him, yeah. it really means he painted his face black that many times. Yeah. <laughs> that he had, didn't even look at the picture and say, oh man, they found one, okay. <laughs> they found one, yeah, I did that all the time. Sorry, guys, I didn't know. It was horrible, so, I mean, it was bad. So admit to it and go yeah. with it. And so what, what's very upsetting 
is that he's trying to take the standard, the stance now that it wasn't him. him. And he's denying that he ever did these types of racist acts in that and yep. being caught there, which means he doesn't really care. care. Which me, to me, yeah. and I can answer the question now, with his actions and what he yeah. did and what he's doing is not helping us move forward against racism. Yep. He's condoning it. Yep. He's denying it. He's, he's you know, it, sorry. See, if like, you can do that, you are racist. If you were not re me and you're different. For that, me and you're different. You on are this racist. One. Me and you are different. Yeah, on I know this. we are. We're different on this one. And it, I'm going to tell you, I honestly and truly do not believe it that Governor Ralph Nordstrom is racist. I just don't. I, I, I don't. Um, we've all. None of us. None of us here are perfect. We've all done things that um, we're probably not proud of. Maybe jaywalked a couple times. You know, none of us are perfect. And I don't think, I, I, there's just nothing in Ralph Nordstrom in the immediate 20, 25 years of his life that he's done anything that proves that this guy's a racist. He's done a lot of stuff in the, pa in the past two years, though, that has helped marginalized communities within Virginia. I mean, he's a decent governor. He's a decent Democratic good governor. In my opinion, okay? I'm just giving yeah. you my opinion. Except for... Not admitting to what you did was well, wrong. Well, until that's I, what I this it. is why I was no, laughing. I, I understand it because I get he it. he was going right. He did it right. He went out there, presented himself, said, "Hey, look, I am sorry. I might have done something like this in my past. It wasn't right. I shouldn't have did. Just stay with that." But but he only stays with it if he means it. Yeah, that's the thing. He has to actually mean it. And yeah. and the reason why I say he doesn't mean it and he didn't mean it is because he retracted. Is he retracted it? Mm -hmm. it. He's going back on that mm -hmm. and he's. Telling folks, if you get caught, say it wasn't me. Yep. Right? Yep. That's what he is doing, and, and I, I don't condone that. I mean, look, you are right. Nobody's perfect. Yep. But in our society, in our community, we, we do accept that. Yeah. You know, we have Just folks. Just be responsible for what you did, yeah, though. We have folks who go to Alcohol Anonymous right. all the time, right? right. A, yep. meetings and say, hi, I'm an alcoholic. Right? They, you, it's okay. Yep. You admit to it, you know it, you move on, and you're trying to rehabilitate yourself. And racism was a problem, and is a problem, but mm -hmm. it, it was ingrained in so many people's uh, uh, body Psyche. and mind, and, mm -hmm. and just they consumed it, and yep. not realizing. Yeah. And they are ignorant, and we have people today that are ignorant to the fact And not in the meantime, they are of racist. Ignorance. Right. Just Honestly, what the word means, they're just right. ignorant and some to people it. can't yeah. see it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I know today, yeah. like I said, I'll find people who paint, you know, mm -hmm. on their face right now, yep. not the whole face, but they will paint lines yep. to make them look more Asian in their Asian costumes. Mm. We see CGI mm. being done in movies to do it. These things, our Asian community will come out and say it's racist, but there's a large part of the community, minorities included, yep. will say that's not racist. That's not racist. How are you going to expect them to believe that they're, you know, playing an Asian if they don't make themselves look more Asian by, you know, making their eyes more squintier? Mm. You see? These are the things that you know, people are still ignorant to the fact of how racist it is. Yeah. So if he knew and he made this mistake, apologized for it, and helped people get through it, right? I mean, yep. it, it, it's still here. Yeah. You know, it's invisible to a lot of folks, right? But come on, I mean. But isn't there a bigger issue here, Bobby? No, there is. Who and vetted Governor Ralph Nordstrom? That's something to think about. Who, who, who's on his, um, uh, what do you call it, his public relations team? Who's in charge of that? Well, the, yeah, who thought that team. it was okay to come out with a video one way and then thought it would be okay to come out in a video in a different way like that? Right. Who is in charge and Governor Ralph Nordstrom's administration, I thought that was okay. Right. So that's an issue of what has to happen now, if he, whether he resigns or not. Yeah. Because we know what that area you think might he, look like. And you don't think? Do you think well, he needs to resign? That depends on what's happening there, right? Because what he does, I mean, if he could resign mm -hmm. and make sure that you know a, another racist doesn't come in, mm. then absolutely he should resign. And, if there are good choices, he and, should resign. But I don't know the area. And we need to we need to also just also talk about the fact that um, put up his. Um, his military photo really quick because I think it's very important. Well, so you, you, you're going to show this yeah. photo and it's, it's going to make it <laughs> if you notice, worse for what you if said. You I'm sorry. If you notice, if you notice uh, his nickname there is Coon Man. He's not in high school anymore, right? And this is his military photo. And what's shocking is this is the Virginia military, uh, military Academy. Who in the military academy even thought that that was okay in the 80s? I grew up in the 80s. Goose is cool. <laughs> Top Gun, right? That was a cool. We should have stayed with that one. 
But Coon Man. Oh my God. I don't know. So anyway, Coon Man. We're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna get into this. We're gonna get in depth in this in the next segment. Right. We want to talk about this. So just real quick. Okay. The 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 issue about race is just one big way to turn this into a huge national issue. And we're gonna tell you what it really is about yep. when we come back. Catch you on the other side. And we are back, Bobby. So, we told you kind of the timeline of Monday, January 28th of the Congresswoman Kathy Tran and the issues about abortion mm -hmm. and how that spiraled, got Governor uh, Ralph Nordstrom involved and how that spiraled out of control as of Tuesday or Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, it got to become from abortion to racism. And now the political, uh, uh, let's say the political atmosphere for the Democratic Party in the state of Virginia is in turmoil. I mean, you got now, uh, you got Governor Ralph Nordstrom in trouble. You got the Lieutenant Governor and sexual uh, issues that are going on there. You got the Attorney General that's happening. but. We don't think, me and you are actually in agreements on this. This is not about a racial issue, is it? Right. We got two years. Mm -hmm. Two years to what? 2020. 2020. Yeah. Right? Big presidential right. election, right. big governor. Well, almost two years now. Yeah. But, you know, the next election is happening. It's time the campaign start moving. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so this wall, yep. this wall here mm -hmm. uh, is, 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 is turning out to be something that is not working for President Trump. Yeah. It is not working for conservatives in general. Right. So the argument about a wall and border security is kind of fading away because yeah. of the damage that has just happened. Yep. And with more the, damage may happen pretty down. soon. With right. the prior close with down. With the prior close down, <clears throat> with what's coming uh, in the next week, mm -hmm. but possibly with the threat the, of another the other government down, shutdown. Mm -hmm. Another shutdown. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to. You know, they have to see that, okay, we need another thing just in case this wall stuff doesn't work. They need mm -hmm. a, to, to strengthen that base. Mm -hmm. So what best do to make something that they they believe that every single conservative... Evangelical yes, conservative. Every, big, well, it's yeah. a part of the platform. Yeah. Every single conservative cares about, mm -hmm. which is um, the, the is being, in their words, pro-life, mm -hmm. right? So that's very important to them. So they can bring that to the forefront mm -hmm. at the same time dismantling <clears throat> the democratic the democratic party. system right in virginia the, yes. in the state well national level right you're look, well, actually right now you're looking at we are paying attention to it we don't live in virginia we're yeah. out here in fresno california yeah and we are talking about this issue here mm -hmm. that's happening there and, and asking should he resign or should he not when yep. it doesn't really affect us, yeah. and, but we're giving opinions on it. Yep. I'm watching our local politics uh, from advocacy groups within the Democratic Party now start to fight each other mm. over whether or not you know he's a racist and should step down, or whether or not he should be forgiven. You know, Over an issue over that's that in Virginia. Issue in Virginia, <clears throat> but it's about racism, yep. and now you're starting to break this group apart. But the original issue is, is abortion. abortion. And, and the that, evangelical vote. Right. And the and yeah, and, and the stacking of judges. And we are not finding yeah. the time to be able to refute, to, to fight mm -hmm. their movements towards Because we're fighting the racial right. issue and they're over here in the back That's right. handling the abortion issue. And so we all have to be careful yeah. and pay attention to it because yeah. they have spinning that rhetoric. Yeah. I mean for the for the state yeah. of the union to include mm. forty week abortions, <laughs> for people to start yeah. talking about, oh, you know, the 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 the, the head could be in the yeah. in the you know in, yeah. in the uterus or the, in the the body could be hanging out and they can just kill the word, baby. How did how did Trump word it? Yeah. Uh, Democrats are becoming the party of late term abortion, high taxes, open border and right. crime. So now he just added right. usually it's just uh, open borders and crime, Democrats. Right. There you go. Now they added the abortion issue. Yep. I, I'm surprised he put high tax because the middle <laughs> class is going to pay higher tax now. But that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but you see the abortion. I mean, the, the people are thinking now, that you know it's what? legal to have. And actually, it's not legal to have partial birth abortions. It's, there's a ban on it. Yeah. If 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 uh, if the head is sticking out anyway whatsoever, you cannot perform an abortion. It is over. It's against the law at any stage. Yeah. Okay. Partial abortion is not. The the other way is if the navel is showing, it's over. You cannot abort. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no abortion. You cannot stop it. There's no termination of pregnancy at that particular point. So, 
we need to get that rhetoric out of there. We need to be able to fight it. We need to start, you know, continue to use the right rhetoric and give the right explanations and not let them twist it. So do you think here, here, this is my question, and, and I have an opinion on it, so I'm just going to ask what your opinion is. Do you think that this, I, I already know it's not a racial, me and you agree on that. Right. It's, it's not about this racist issue. So no matter what you think. They care about racism. No, they don't care. Right. We know it's about the abortion issue. So yes. is it about the actual abortion issue in the it, national level, or is it about dismantling and disrupting the Democratic Party in the state of Virginia? Well, it, it, no, it's, it, 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 it's not about disrupting the Democratic Party in the okay. state of Virginia. It's, it's more about, about the abortion it's issue. It's more about Roe v. Wade. Okay. It's more about creating something that every conservative Republican politician can pull unity yep. behind the party mm -hmm. and break apart the Democratic Party. So no more, you don't think that they're going to go after the wall issue in 2020, their mandate will be about the abortion issue. Right. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll do both. Yep. But the wall doesn't unify everybody, yep. every single conservative. Right. Abortion will. Right. We, in our, we're in Fresno, California, and we already have local politicians jumping on to that same rhetoric for their campaigns, mm -hmm. right? So, so local city council member just did a big, big tweet oh, yeah. about abortion, and, saying and, abortion and means murder. And in New mm -hmm. York, they're trying to murder these babies. Yeah. So the party is creating something to yeah. unify, get behind. In 2020. And, right, in 2020, yeah. and we cannot let that happen. Right. We cannot let that happen yeah. because they don't care. The truth is they don't care about the current law because what New York is doing, what, uh, what they're doing in Virginia, is nothing outside of what the federal law already, already has. has. Those are the rules that are in place. Already. Nothing changes yeah. in every single state. Yeah. <laughs> it's that way. These yeah. rules are allowed that if you are to have any uh, late term abortion, any mm -hmm. termination of pregnancy after a baby is viable, which used to be 24 weeks, we have a, you know, maybe a, it might be 21 weeks this, at, at this current time, but late term is after that. It has to be because the mother's health is, uh, mental health, or you know, health is in danger. Mm -hmm. And it takes a doctor or several doctors to determine that. Mm -hmm. No mother can determine that on her own. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so that is what we have to remember. And like remember. In, 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 in Virginia, like you were saying, was that a, it was a Virginia law that required three doctors. Right. It wasn't a federal law right. because there are laws already in several states that don't require three doctors. It requires just one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Is California one? I'm, I'm, I'm actually not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, me neither. I'm not too but sure. The point but is I, the federal law, yeah, which every law already for, authorizes, already authorizes that. that. And so, and they as, jump on that. Right. And as people don't feel, as someone who is uh, pro-choice, yeah. Don't feel that you have to defend the argument that someone is wanting a 40-week uh, 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 abortion or a termination of pregnancy at 40 weeks. Don't feel that you have to actually defend that yep. on the state that she just wants to do it. Yep. You don't have to defend it because that's not what is happening. You know, and okay? even on the pro-life and pro-choice sides of the house, no matter where you fall, at the end of the day, the woman sh it's, we're talking about a woman's body mm -hmm. at the end of the day, okay? The woman should have the right to make a decision about her body. This is what the pro-life and pro-choice arguments are. And for a political party to try to always step in, who t wants limited government, don't do this, don't do that, and are wanting to mandate and, and start facilitating laws that govern what a woman can and can't do with her own body is where the problem lies. Mm -hmm. And this is a, in my opinion, okay, I'm coming with my opinion, this is evangelicals certain evangelists, because there's not all of them, there are some that are that are that that don't fall under this mandate, that are just in this weird thing of wanting to control women. It, I mean, it, it, it's, 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 you know, right now we had the large 19,000 women that ran for, for political office. And the Republican Party knows this. And there are gonna be laws that are gonna be challenged because of it. There are gonna be women. Uh, we saw Andrea uh, Ocasio-Cortez come in in all white. Um, they know what's coming, and they know that there's a war coming. Uh, and women are, you can't put them to the side anymore. Before, in the 50s and 40s, back in the day, uh, not even back in the day, prior to now, women never had as much voices as they do now. And the Republican Party knows that, and I think that's where the issue is, and I think that's where the fight is. It's about abortion, and they know that this is going to come. But 
the courts are stacked. It's a 5-4 court. That's right. So we have to see what happens and, and where this is going right. to lead. So, 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 so just know that this abortion talk, this racist talk, there's a plan. And the plan is to do everything they can Look what's to behind the curtain. break up the party, <laughs> to make them fight with each other. Like we're doing. While we unify everybody behind uh, the woman's right to choose. Yep. Okay, so please stand strong, stay with that fight. We are here with you and, uh, you know, just continue to move on. And let's not fight about the small things. And Democrats, and let's, let's not fight ready. among each other. Yeah, well, we, you know, it, it, we're, we're supposed to argue. We're supposed to discuss. But we got to unify in the end because yep. anything is better than what we have right now in yep. that White House right there. Yep. So um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome show today. Um, I hope you guys realize what, what we're talking about here and what we're saying is there's a lot more to the Governor Nordstrom situation than what you're seeing. Um, there's a whole situation going on, and it's not in the state of Virginia like you were saying. It's a lot larger. It's about an abortion issue. It's about women's rights issues. It's not take the context of the racial issue. That, that is an issue, but it's not the issue of what's going on. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in to the Stephen Bobby Show. I hope you guys can come back and visit us next week. I'll catch up to y'all.